Hey guys, it's Andrea, welcome back to the channel. So guys, saw some videos over on the clock app and I wanted to add my voice to them and it's something that I have been saying for a very long time and I thought I was a voice in the darkness. And it's that once you hit the working world, I'm a big believer of saying the working world, not the real world, because that's gaslighting our kids and teens and young people, that that's not real. School is very real. Getting left out of the birthday party or not being invited, getting a bad grade, not passing your driver's exam, heartbreak, first crushes, not getting a Valentine's. But they are all very real. And so, but what they're saying needs to be talked about. And they are saying that police, law enforcement, guys are not going to care about your accommodations. I wear a sunflower lanyard when I'm in public, when I don't have a support worker, so on my own. And that is becoming more and more common. But there is a wrong way to exist in a society and there's a right way to exist in a society. And guys, there's no questions on that one of, oh, that person's disabled, they get a get out of jail free card. No, they don't. So we need to be teaching our lower functioning people and allying with parents, caregivers, support workers, special education teachers, allied health professionals, chaplaincy services, intervention services. We need to be teaching these people about hygiene, manners, consent. And it may be at a very basic level of waiting your turn, saying please and thank you. If the person is nonverbal, smile, sign language, guys, because and consent is such a big one. There is someone in Australia who has been found to be quite intellectually disabled, has a brain injury, who has been convicted of SA towards his support staff. And this is quite a complex case. He didn't have a support network. He was abusing support staff. Support staff were reporting it, but nothing was being done. And so they had no choice but to go to the cops. And so we can prevent things like this from happening if we are persistent. And guys, it is really bloody hard to consistently, consistently get people out of either deinstitutionalized behavior, manipulative behavior, difficult and challenging behaviors as well. So, guys, repeating yourself saying that's not acceptable, excluding someone, um, teaching them about that you can't open people's mail, that working with people is a good thing, waiting in turn is a good thing, but at the same time, they do need that positive attention. So, when they remember to wait in line, when they put their dishes in the sink, when they unpack a the dishwasher, when they take in their own washing and take ownership of a task, need to be giving that positive reinforcement. But guys, yeah, I have said from the beginning, from starting this channel, starting the blog, starting the podcast, your disability is not an excuse. It is a reason sometimes that you can't do things or need support, need help. But it is not an excuse. And particularly over on the clock app, I'm seeing the self-diagnosed community being very unaware of the harm they're doing to the community. I actually had an inbox saying, hey, but the words you're using are slurs, they're old school, they're ableist. I'm in Australia. We use higher functioning, lower functioning all of the time. They are an adjective to describe someone's level of function in a clinical manner. I'm talking about disability. I am going to use clinical terms to describe disability. I'm speaking to a very wide audience. I'm speaking to some people who this will be their first time interacting with a person with a disability who is not obvious, it's not a bit. I don't use a wheelchair. The only AT I use is a walking belt. 
So it's not obvious at first glance that I have a disability. I didn't identify or realize I was disabled until I had my NDIS package. And that's been a journey for a lot of people in my personal life as well. But guys, yes, we do need accommodations. We do need support. We do need adjusted housing in the way things are running our personal life. But you guys should be teaching people about consent, boundaries, acceptable behaviour from when they are a child or teen. And this can be hard. And so this is why I don't criticise people who do decide to put their children at a very early age in out of home care. They know that they can't handle those behaviours and these people are highly trained. There's an open door policy unless there's a COVID outbreak. And so that is a very good thing. What I'm more offended by is not the wording that people use. Yes, sometimes that can hurt. Yes. If you're using genuine slurs like R, S, guys, yes, I'm happy to be called out. But, guys, what I'm more offended about is people committing disability fraud, emulator fraud, guys, taking spots away from people with a disability. Um, I've listened to an ABC report, ABC being our government-funded radio station, talking about people with a disability who have well-trained guide dogs, so being left by the side of the road by taxis, by Uber, by Lyft drivers, or because they can't see, taking them the long way round and trying to do fair fraud. Public transport not being accessible, so bus drivers not stopping, guys, ramps not being put out, people grabbing a white cane, not being educated on disability. And so this is where I'm trying to be part of that positive change. And guys, this is where I've started to use online, particularly, but offline, I don't use the words neurotypical, neurospicy neurodivergent, because the general public have no idea what we're talking about. Guys, I know we're trying to get them into the common vernacular, but guys, if you're talking about someone in a clinical setting, so support workers doing a handover, um, medical settings, other healthcare settings, allied health settings, guys, you need to be using those clinical terms. And those clinical terms are defined for a reason. Autism spectrum disorder, ADHD, pathological demand avoidance, traumatic brain injury, trauma, mental illness. You don't have to go into what subtype, how it affects you, but that then gives people an idea of what accommodations you need. I'm glad to see a Taylor Swift, Link 182, and Pink, they were implementing the sample language campaign which was showing people that that person has a hidden disability so they may need a little bit of help as well. Pink had a deaf interpreter. I don't know about Taylor Swift but freaking amazing. So guys I know this has been a bit of a ranty off my chest video. I know I haven't done one of these since Christmas. But guys, these are the things that really grind my gears about people being online social justice warriors. And so I'm going to ask the question of what experience do you have with a disability? Do you have a mother, a father, a sibling who is disabled? Welcome to the table. If you are a support worker, welcome to the table. If you're a support coordinator, welcome to the table. If you're a medical professional from an assistant in nursing right up to a specialist, welcome to the table. If you're an allied health professional, welcome to the table. If you're a mental health professional from a 
We have coach positive behaviour and practitioner Brian up to our psychiatrist and forensic psychiatrist working with people with extreme behaviours of concern with trauma backgrounds who have committed criminal acts. Welcome to the table. Guys, otherwise, let's have a discussion about disability and the impact to everyone. I'm not going to gatekeep, but I am going to question what you were saying if you don't have the experience and direct education about disability. So guys, in Australia, there's actually disability education units. There's a lot of disability resources online. Other international creators to check out, Footless Joe. And guys, can we send our best wishes to her as well? Um, so Footless Joe, Molly Burke, Paul and Matthew, Amy Cole, Gemma Hubbard, guys, all exist on the internet as disabled individuals pointing out ableism and discrimination. And guys, we need to remember that not everything people say that's uneducated about disability is a slur, is directly ableist or discrimination. Sometimes people just don't have that experience of disability. Their family has been blessed to be completely and utterly healthy as well. And so, guys, this is where I know that there's a wrong way to be a disabled person on the internet and the right way to be a disabled person on the internet. In fact, there is a term, palatable disabled person. And so that's when you're able to mask, you're able to be in, it's culturally appropriate. And then there's a wrong way, and this is where people are kind of come out and criticise. So that might be family vlogging. And guys, I know there's a lot more complexity with family blogging and vlogging as well. But guys, um, there are people trying to protect those children, and there are parents who are doing it with the child's consent and permission to educate about early intervention. Um, cochlear processes. So Beth and Coop do an amazing job talking about the deaf community, the divide with processes, cochlear implants, and what that means for the deaf community. I've learned a lot through them. Um, Jessica Kelgrad Fraser talks about being an ambulatory wheelchair user, getting misdiagnosed, having genetic disability and queer topics and just historical disability figures. And guys, I'm now starting to talk about hidden disability allies because guys, our allies are found in the most unlikely places. They're found in education, they found in social clubs, in guiding and scouting, boys' brigade, girls' brigade. So, guys, um, this is the thing. Allies aren't always going to be on their perfect behaviour, saying that and doing the right thing as well. Because like the rest of us, we all make mistakes because we are all human. We are all flawed. And that's what makes the world great. So, guys... Coming up to a milestone birthday, um, so guys, best free birthday present you can give me is liking, sharing, commenting, and most importantly, subscribing, guys. 80% of my returning viewers aren't subscribing. So guys, let me know if you want to see more vlogging content. Guys, I'm doing a lot more of sit-down talking head because, guys, quite frankly, that's the easiest to do with the fatigue and medical appointments that are coming up as well. And, guys, I will be taking a two- to three-week break with my neck and stuff like that, so what you will be seeing will be pre-recorded. I will be checking in on the comments section and my emails, but, guys, I'm going to have to head to my local capital city uh, moving forward with that one as well. So guys, I will see you guys in the next video.